Hello and good morning. Welcome to today's devotional using the daily fountain of Church of Nigeria. Today is 18th of December 2017 and the topic is the ultimate kingdom. Taking the text from Daniel chapter 2 from verse 35 to 45. Please invite your family and friends for the study. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of life and a new day. Grant us your understanding as we study your word in Jesus' name. Our Bible reading is taken from Daniel, the book of Daniel chapter 2, verse 35 to 45. It reads thus. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king, thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And we are sober the children of men do well. The beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven has he given into the hand and has made the ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall be a rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things. And iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with Mary Claire, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with Mary Claire, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. This is the word of God. As a background to this text, considering the topic, the ultimate kingdom, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream and could not remember it when he woke up from his sleep. And when he, he couldn't remember the dream, he was worried and therefore invited the magicians the astrologers, the soothsayers that were upon the land and requested from them to tell him the dream he had and to interpret it to him. The king was so furious and so he ordered the captain of his king's guard, known as Ariok. Unfortunately, on hearing this, the magicians could not interpret the dream. They could not even tell him the dream which he had, which he had forgotten. And so, the king of Babylon 
decreed and decided that his, the captain of his guide, Ariel, should gather them together, the magicians, all the astrologers, soothsayers upon the land, and should destroy them for failing to remind him the dream which he had. On hearing this, a man, a brother, a child of God, known as Daniel, requested from the captain of the king's guard, Ariel, to give him and his brothers some time to pray and consult God. They should, he should not, for now, destroy the lives of these magicians. And the Bible says that thereafter, Daniel consulted God, prayed to God. And when he prayed to God, God revealed to him the dream of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel went to him and interpreted the dream to the king of Babylon and told him that dream which he had forgotten. After Daniel interpreted it, he said to him, told the king of Babylon, on how his kingdom will be so powerful in, strong and in strength and in glory such that no other kingdom will be able to indeed rival with his own kingdom. The king was happy, but Daniel went ahead to tell him that those kingdoms, that the other kingdom that will rise up, and when they will rise up, God had determined to eventually set up another kingdom that can never be destroyed. And that kingdom, God will reign over the kingdom forever. Hallelujah. People of God, having listened to me this morning, I would like to encourage you. And I would like you to note that though there are several kingdoms, there is a kingdom that is called an ultimate kingdom. We are Jesus Christ. We reign over them with those who have given their lives to Jesus. And so, I would like to urge you that while you think where you are now, you are comfortable to remember that this heaven and earth where we dwell shall pass away. But there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That's why Jesus, in John chapter 14, from verse 1 following, did inform his disciples that, behold, he is going to the Father. And as he goes to the Father, he will prepare a place for God's people. And those who believe in the Father and believe in him, that he will come back and take them where he is. Jesus was talking about the new heaven and the new earth, the ultimate kingdom, the kingdom that runs from generation to generation, the kingdom that has no end, the kingdom where there will be no more weeping, no more troubles, no more physical and spiritual challenges that most of us are passing through because God shall be in charge, shall be in charge of this kingdom. It is a kingdom that is not man-made. It's a kingdom that is divine. It is a kingdom that we grant unto you as a person eternal life and the peace which no one can give. And therefore, I want to urge us to come to Jesus, to embrace Jesus, to believe this Jesus, to accept him into our lives, to make him our Lord and Savior, to ensure that the avarice of the world today will not consume our lives, will not take us away, far away from the sight of God. And so, because of this revelation that God gave to Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, we are able to know that even though his kingdom was qualified by God in strength and in glory, that it is not the ultimate kingdom. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, viewers who are listening to me this morning, 
that God's plan towards you is not evil, but good. To grant you an expected end. But you have a duty. A duty to serve the Lord. A duty to obey Him. A duty to ensure that you surrender your life unto Jesus. Where He will be Lord and Savior over your life. I invite you. I invite you to come to this Master Jesus. Who is the Bishop of your soul. Who is the author and finisher of your faith. And indeed, you will not regret it. Because every other kingdom shall pass away. But this ultimate kingdom, we are Jesus, shall reign and shall be in charge. We remain from generation to generation. That is why I want to welcome you to ensure that you are part of this kingdom. Have you given your life to Jesus? That is the beginning of becoming part of this ultimate kingdom. If you have not given your life to Jesus, I plead with you. Give your life to Jesus. He will not abandon you. He will accept you. He will give you, indeed, a better place, a better home, a better destination, and life. And so, I demand that you have a real thought about this ultimate kingdom. Let us pray. Great God, we give you thanks and the praise for this your servants, O oh God, who have listened to your word. Bring a God almighty change in their hearts and give them this new kingdom. We are you, Jesus, shall reign forever and grant your people eternity, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please join us sometime since session tomorrow for another episode of this devotion. If you are led to sponsor this program, please, I crave indulgence to contact the numbers showing on the screen. And the Lord will bless you real good. Amen.